Mario in Moderna, Italy. Mario, like Mario, like the Mario Brothers. <laughs> that was always my favorite video game. I love that game. Okay, um, Mario writes and he says, I understand DSP and EQ can help lower bass peaks in the room, but I never heard it work to reduce bass dips. Why not? You know, I, I think that is an excellent question, Mario. And there's a pretty simple answer to it, but I want to explain just a little bit, okay? Because in my new book, The Audiophile's Guide, The Loudspeaker, we talk a lot about, in fact, I spend you know at least a chapter on bass suckouts and bass dips, how we find them, how we identify them, what we do about them. And the, the, the truth is, if you have a speaker like the FR30 or the FR20 when it comes out that produces good flat bass down to a very low level, it's never the fault of the speaker. It's the fault of the room. The room is what causes the bass dips and peaks. And they are caused by the sound of these long frequencies of bass bunching up into the room and coming, doubling back out of time, out of phase with, or in phase for, so if it doubles back in phase, you've got a bump, and if it doubles back out of phase, you've got a dip, right? And you can move, and, and in the book, uh, The Audiophile's Guide, The Loudspeaker, I show you how to get rid of those with uh, moving your position around, changing the speakers a little bit, and we find, we find a nice sweet spot where it's pretty flat. But using DSP, digital signal processing, certainly in a woofer, subwoofer, however you, you want to uh, apply the DSP, which is my preference has always been keep it in the bass. I'm fine with that. I, I like DSP for bass. Not so big on the, on the mid-range and tweeter, but that's a subject for another day. In the bass, DSP can be great. And if there's a big peak, it's pretty easy to reduce that peak in DSP. We just have a filter and we pull it back down. So what happens? Well, as I said, as the woofer is moving in and out, it's long wavelength, sometimes 20, 30 feet, bunches up in the room and doubles back in time meets the other wave and you get a, a doubling of the frequency or you know whatever. If you turn that frequency down, it can go down and hit flat without too much trouble. It's still doing its thing. It's still doing the doubling, but now the source is quite a bit lower. But dips, it doesn't work with dips. It just doesn't work with dips. Why? Because with a dip, you're getting phase cancellation. So this long waveform is hitting. It has enough uh, time to reverse the phase. And when that happens and two waves out of phase meet, what do you get? <laughs> Nothing. It just goes away. And no matter how much energy you can, you can try jamming that DSP up as high as you want, 10, 20, 30, 40 dB, it's still just going to cancel. And, you, and all you're doing is straining the hell out of your speaker and your amp. So that's why you can't get rid of dips. But you can reduce peaks. Just can't get rid of dips. Hope that makes sense. And, and lastly, in the book, and I've talked about this before, you can, another way to get around it is with the use of a sub. And you place the sub somewhere else that isn't where your speakers are. And there's a whole technique to finding the perfect spot in the room where the subwoofer goes, and then at your listening position, it sounds flat. So, okay, thanks. I'll talk to you later.